Hello, my name is Derek Robertson. I'm a wildlife artist up in Scotland and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a painting that I produced a couple of years ago as part of a long-term project uh, called Migrations. And I'm going to spend a little part of today painting and sketching skylarks and uh, that's very appropriate because the painting I'm going to talk about features a skylark in amongst the subject matter of the, the painting and uh, the skylarks are just beginning to sing today on a cold but sunny day in January. So this is the actual painting I want to talk about. It's the completed work which is in the Nature and Art collection. Well I started the Migrations project a couple of years ago and it became a year-long set of paintings and a large body of work which was themed around the idea of the links between climate change and refugee crises. And in that time I travelled through the UK and through Europe and out to the Middle East and stayed with refugee families and sketched in refugee camps and in transit points and used the motif of birds in their role as environmental indicators and pointing towards how these changes in the environment had linked to the crises that had developed. And also using birds in many ways as a metaphor for people. So my practice is very much about um, sketching from life and making direct observations and that's what fed into this entire project. I found I was working in the, in the same way. I'll uh, draw quick shapes uh, from using observational memory and uh, direct, direct drawing. The painting I'm going to talk about is Singing Under the Same Sky, which was exhibited at Nature and Art a couple of years ago and which I gifted to their collection. It depicts skylarks singing above the jungle camp in Cali where I was staying and sketching in the last days of the camp um, when parts of it were on fire and people were being cleared away to official camps throughout, throughout France. The painting was produced in the jungle camp in Cali. I worked on it over the course of just one day, making notes and studies in the camp. And when I was working on the picture, people were coming up to me uh, to chat, uh, refugees. And as I watched, the camp was on fire and people were moving from the, the camp through the edge of the fence, pulling up some of the netting to get underneath. When I was sketching in the camps, I would often have a group of people around me who were stopping to talk about what I was doing. And I found that, uh, you know, having drawing put people at ease made me very approachable. And also, even if we didn't have a language in common, we could still communicate um, just by using the images that I was beginning to build up in my sketchbooks. My paintings themselves are full of little notes which I produce um, and these have little pieces about the, the weather and the light. You can hear the skylark singing. And as I worked there were skylarks singing overhead. It was very poignant seeing these birds flying over the man-made barriers that were keeping people from moving. The detritus of the camp involved layers of fences and barbed wire, but in amongst it were some very old pieces of uh, infrastructure which had been there since the First and Second World Wars. And I started painting the larks which were singing above the camp where I was sketching. There were lots of skylarks among them, but my attention was drawn to this crested lark, which became the focus of the painting. I was there for a few weeks in October, November. The weather had started to turn cold, wet and icy. I found that whenever I included people in the paintings that I was making, they were shrouded, hidden figures. They could be anyone. 
I used exactly the same wildlife sketching and painting processes that I use in the field when I'm in wild parts of the landscape and applied them to the quite shocking and disturbed detritus of the camp. Some of the remaining tents were charred and covered in soot and as I worked you can see the notes that I made about what was going on, the colours, the sights, the sounds. The issues concerned in these paintings are difficult, they are uncomfortable, but I wanted to produce paintings which drew people in, which were appealing and engaging and then pointed towards discomfort, unease and made people think again. Being in quite a distressing place like this was upsetting to say the least, but part of the story was the amazing fortitude of the people who were living there, who somehow had maintained their humanity in the face of conditions that I would have personally found crushing. Not just that, but the people who'd gone there to help. So I spoke to people who were volunteering, who'd arrived a few years before just to spend a couple of weeks helping out and then had given up their careers, their family lives and their home life entirely to do what they could to help. Well, I hope you've enjoyed hearing a bit about my painting. Uh, if you'd like to know more about my migrations project, then just follow the links here on the video to my website or to my YouTube channel, which has some documentaries about that work. It's uh, been a pleasure having a bit of a chat and thank you very much to Nature and Art for inviting me to participate in this video project.